Today's message is going to be kind of simple. I'm just going to just have a scripture up here. Nothing. It's just it's a story. A segment of Moses' life after he fled Egypt. Because he killed an Egyptian. Pharaoh's son, Pharaoh's son, not by, by birth, but because Moses was found in, the, in this basket in the water because they were wanting to kill all the baby boys during that time of the Israelites. And one of the the one that gave Moses birth put him in a basket and pushed him out towards the Egyptians. And they found the baby. And the baby then became the son of the son. He was Pharaoh. He was Pharaoh's house. The son of Pharaoh. And he grew up as a powerful man in Egypt. He didn't realize that he was an Israelite. He thought he was an Egyptian. This is our story. When we when we get on this earth, we think we're just men and women of the earth. We think we're just, really we're God's chosen. We don't realize it. This is sort of Moses' story. He didn't realize he was God's chosen people, but but then he came to realize it through different events that his mother was not his birth mother and traced it all the way back and located his mother and he realized that he was an Israelite and the Israelites were Slaves of the Egyptians, oppressed, beaten down. And he, in this one time, he saw this Egyptian guard punishing, beating an Israelite. And he just lost it. And he killed that Egyptian guard, which is another. So he fled. He ran. We can all relate to that. It's fight or flight. He was afraid of. He knew it was wrong. But he didn't know what to do. So he fled to the backside of the desert. And here he is. He's been there for 40 years. He was age 40 when he killed the Egyptian. He's been out in the desert. Now he's a shepherd in this desert nomad type of place. For 40 years he's been out there. He has a family now. He has children. And this is where the story picks up. Susan, why are you playing the worship team? What are you doing? Why are you up here? Waiting. What now? Waiting. But why? Because Jesus said so. How do, you, how, do you, how do you know he's talking? How do you know? But, I mean, it either comes back to we sense God. I mean, I'm hoping that we're here. Because we sense that God wants us to be here. It's either that or, or we're, we're just living by whim. Or we're living by whatever, I don't know, it 
it seems good to do it, so we do it. You know, why am I up here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? I mean, if I don't sense God, why would I marry Eleanor and Mark? Why did I do that? There are people that I have not married. me up and say, could you, could you marry me? I don't know these people worth Adam. I don't know how they got a hold of my address or my name or my number. But they did. I said, well, let's, let's meet together. Well, we want to get married on Friday. It's a good thing to marry you to. I'm not saying it isn't, but someday I'm going to be held accountable before God for blessing this union that you guys have or want. So I know you guys are convinced, but I ain't there yet. Can we go through a process? Click. I, mean, I think that was about it. That's not the way it was. Or I've said, so why do you want me to do it? I mean, you, can do it. you don't have to go to the church. You can go downtown to Justice of the Peace. Whatever you want to do. Why do you want, I said, I'm assuming you want me to do it because you want God to bless it. So, you know, how, how is that going to happen? So it's a process of walking with people, but I have to be convinced. I mean, I, have, I, don't, <coughs> I can't stand up or sit up here and say everything I do is based on what I ask. Sometimes what I'm saying, sometimes <coughs> I get in the way. How is it, how is it with your life? Here's Moses. He ran. I think he thought he was going to die in the desert. I don't know what kind of relationship he had with God at this point in his life. Him killing that Egyptian was not a humble act. But it does say in the Bible, it's in the book of Numbers. That during those 40 years, Moses became the most humble man on the face of the earth. It says he was the most humble man on the face of the earth. God can use humble people. Just, just think about it. What's, what's the opposite of humble? Proud, stubborn people. How about that? How do you lead? It's like leading cats. How do you lead, how do you lead a cat? What do you do? How do you do that? I mean, they don't have any great cat training schools out there. Why is that? I mean, they have dog training schools. I understand that. Dogs can get trained. Cats. Not cats. It, it's difficult. It's difficult. They're like Susans. <laughs> so, I mean, they try to, but you know what they do with the, the big cats? They cage them. You're not supposed to go in the... I don't care how much you train a big cat. They are a dangerous animal. Dogs... 
absolutely trained and under tremendous pressure, they will do what they're told. We all have. None of us, God has not given us a cat spirit. I just want to let you know this. We can all be trained. We can all come under submission. The biggest problem that we have is what? Sometimes during the music I say, okay, I want you to play this. You can sing it by yourself. Just you. I've had different people tell me, I can't do that. And, hey, you know what I say? That's a lie. You won't do that. That's real. None of us want to be hung out there all by ourselves. I understand it, but that's how you learn. How many know this? Not until you hit the brick wall do you realize you're going the wrong way. Sometimes that's really the way it is. I mean, I'd like to, and Moses hit the brick wall in life. That's where God says, I think I'm going to show up in his life. It's time. My bar in Moses is ready. Many times, I believe we're waiting on God, but God's waiting on us. Here's, this is in the voice translation. Following your Bibles, you can't because it would probably be different than this, but you probably don't have a voice translation. I chose it because it, 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 voice translation reads nicely and it, it has a little different quirks in it. Now, what, what, was, what, what was that? Was this a snicker? <laughs> now, one day, when Moses was shepherding the flock of his father in law, it's interesting, there he is. He's dealing with sheep. God says that we are like sheep. We're not like goats. We're not like cats. We're like sheep. Sheep are afraid. Sheep like to follow others. Sheep get easily distracted. We're like sheep in different ways. That's what God says. But here's Moses shepherding the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. So he, he found someone. His father-in-law was a priest, which is interesting. I'm not sure exactly how that all works. So he got in the flock far away from its usual passage on the other side of the desert. He came to a place known as Horeb, where the mountain of God stood. Said the mountain of God. I don't know if you realized it was the mountain of God at that point. There, the special messenger of the eternal appeared to Moses in a fiery blaze. The special messenger of the eternal. If you get into the Hebrew, this is this is interesting language in here. It talks about where Yahweh shows up. And different translations that will have Lord, but all capital letters, Lord. Not Lord, capital letter, then the other ones are lowercase. This L capital, O capital, Lord. When that is in your translations, if it says that, that means it's Yahweh, God which is the, and Yahweh means what? I am. I am. 
that I am. And I will be who I will be. One of the things of the, of the ancient times is, is that if they could limit you and name you, then they would have power over you. How do you have power over I am that I am? It's just, it's like expansive. Okay, so here. God shows up in a fiery blaze from within the bush. Moses looked again at the bush as a blaze, but to his amazement, but the bush did not burn up in flames. Okay, bushes out in the desert would burn at different times, but this was a butane bush. It didn't stop burning. It didn't burn up. It just kept going. It got Moses' attention. This is different. Why doesn't this thing burn up? Usually something flames up in the desert and it's gone. I mean, there's not a lot of water out there. So the thing just flamed up. It got his attention. So he went over there. <laughs> Moses doing the normal things. How many of us think we got to go looking for God somewhere? You ever think that? You don't have to go looking for God. God knows your address. He'll find you. He'll find you. Do you want him to show up in your everyday life? This is everyday life showing up. Ask him to show up in your everyday life. This is huge. I think this is how we get outside of ourselves. If God doesn't show up in our everyday life, we just live our everyday life. Something's got to shake our everyday life. So here, those on burning bushes in the desert are not uncommon. Dry plants make good tinder. This is right in the voice translation. They kind of give a little commentary. Dry plants make good tinder. Lightning strikes quickly set them ablaze. What is unusual is the fact that the bush continues to burn a curiosity for the seasoned shepherd. As Moses draws close, he sees more than he expects. He encounters the one true God and his special messenger. But the form of the encounter is not completely clear. Moses hears directly from God, but he sees only fire in God's special messenger. The point here is not simply to amaze Moses with miracles, but to call him to an important task. God's people are suffering and they need someone willing to go and rescue them. God has already decided the right person for the job. But Moses needs to be persuaded. That's kind of like a commentary right in the middle of this. That's, that's what they do with the boys. How many have inklings that God, that you know what God wants you? Inkling. You have premonition. You have some thoughts that you know what God wants you to do. What's going to push you over the top? Only God can. Because there's a whole lot of people died not having received the promises. What's going to push us over the top? some other church. People have said this to me. When I sense that I need to join another church, I will. But until then, I'm not. What do you sense? Do you sense you need to be here? You need to, you, you sense you need to be here? Okay, let's, let's go to the next step. Do you sense that you need to follow what I say? Am I the leader here? Am I, am I 
I'm one of the primary leaders here, or what? You sense that? I, well, I mean, why be here if you're not going to follow what I say, right? That means it's way, way tough. I mean, I can pull out scriptures and say it's, it's a burden on the leader that if you don't follow them, it, it makes it weird for them. You know that as parents. Kids don't do what you say. It's a hardship. They expect that from kids, but eventually they got to grow up. I want you to, as much as I understand about that, Moses is a really unique person. Way back when, when I, I, went, I went to two uh, church planning workshops. And I went to uh, different things. You know what? When you plan a church or start a church, that's kind of what we're doing really, in some of the aspects. The people that are in this church absolutely need to believe that God's in them, that God wants this thing. If we question that, why move forward, right? You can't. Because one bad time's come. How about this? How many know, those of you who are married, that you believe God wants you to be married? I mean, if you don't believe that, because when the tough times come, you'll say, why am I doing this? That's what people do in a church. When tough times come, if they really don't sense God's call there, they're out the door. I've experienced that. That's why I'm not out the door, because I don't believe that. I could have been out the door many, many a year ago. Why? I'm just stupid? <laughs> no, because there again, I mean... Nobody's touching it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Monetarily, it's, it's not working great. I mean, I could go down the line. What's not working great? I have no retirement, little retirement. I can go down the line. Who am I serving? Who are you serving? If, if you really sense God, then let's get involved and let's do this. There's only so much I can do. And you might... The reason I chose this passage, we're going to get into Because Moses is so real. Moses to himself. I like that. Have you ever talked to yourself? Yeah. I talk to myself. <laughs> it's not weird. It's fine. It's even in the Bible. It's okay. Do it. If you don't talk to yourself, you're lying. <laughs> Why is this bush not burning up? I need to move a little closer to get a better look at this amazing sight. When the Eternal One saw Moses approach the burning bush to observe it more closely, he called out to him from the bush. And it's not like in the, what, Charles Heston, Moses. It's not, I don't know how that got to be it that way. Moses, Moses! Can you imagine? Here's my, him telling this story to somebody else. Yeah, I was out there and there was this burning bush. His voice came out of the book. Man, you're weird. What is wrong with you? God can show up. I've had him show up so much in my car before the tears are coming down the road. my cheeks that I have to pull up. I pull over. You want God to show up in your life, he can. Moses ain't no unique guy. He finally came to the end of himself, and that's when he was able to hear God. That's reality. Jesus changed the world. Twelve people. He called twelve people.
Moses says, I'm right here. Nice answer. Sounds real spiritual, doesn't it? I'm right here. Moses, but I'm right here. Don't come any closer. Take off your sandals and stand barefoot on the ground in my presence. For this ground is holy ground. I am the true God, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The feeling of dread and awe rushed over Moses. He hid his face because he was afraid. God, would you raise the amperage in us that we would hear your voice? Help us to turn aside to talk to you. Would you get our attention, God? Or else, what I think I've done is, I don't know, we just sort of just ease around. God, you'll get a passion. You'll get a passion. Eternal one. God. I've seen how my people in Egypt are being mistreated. I've heard their groaning when the slave drivers torment and harass them. When I know well their suffering. I've come to rescue them from the oppression of the Egyptians to lead them from that land where they are slaves and to give them a good land, a wide open space flowing with milk and honey. The land is currently inhabited by the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. The plea of Israel's children have come before me, and I have observed the cruel treatment they have suffered by the Egyptian hand. Okay, what's being said here? God sees injustice. That people are suffering. How many know that there are people in this county suffering? They don't know Jesus. Some people are barely making it by. They don't have a family. They don't know who they are. They don't know who to connect with. They're lonely. Someone has got to go. Who's it going to be? I was at this one, I was pastor of this one church. They had a huge, a huge amount of money every year that they sent to the missionary, which is fine. Nothing wrong with sending money to the missionaries. But I noticed in their church constitution, Their number one mission was evangelism. Lo and behold, when so and so and so and so came up to church, drove in on their Harley Davidson. There were church butts on the sidewalk. You need cigarette butts? Oh, yeah, church butts. Well, they became church butts. There were butts on the sidewalk. There were, there were cigarette butts on the sidewalk strewn all over. People got upset. Doing evangelism right around here. It shook up that nice little country club. Is what happened. It's easy to send money to the missionaries. How about we go out there? Because we start fishing for, for men and women. Fish are stinky. We want our fish filleted and ready to fry, as some person said. We like them all cleaned up before they come in. I remember reaching out to this one person. Man, they smoked so much it was blue in, the, in their room. I've been, have been in rooms like that. All right. Well, the youth group went to that person's house one time for, uh, I think they were doing Christmas carols, knocking on people's door. I was freezing out. They let them in. I heard about it. Yeah, there's a lot of smoke in there, this and that, and they had alcohol out in there. Hey! That's what we're supposed to do! What are we supposed to do? People are crying.
crying out. But we're so much into ourselves, we can't get beyond ourselves to help other people out. That's one of the main reasons there isn't evangelism, because we are into our own lives. We're not reaching out to people. I know you, you guys love children. I like children. You guys are children, you know. Tell you what, we start bringing children in here, you know what's going to happen eventually? Families will come in here. That's what happens. I've seen it before. It's not immediate, but don't, every once in a while, they, people will start coming in. You gotta, you just walk through the open door. You don't have to create doors. People walk into our lives. Kids walk into our lives. Neighbors walk into our lives. Things happen. There are people looking. God, open our eyes to see. There are people crying out for God. That's why he has us here. The plea of Israel's children had come before me, and I've observed the cruel treatment they have suffered in the Egyptians' hands. So look what he said. So go! I'm sending you. Wait a minute. Up here it says, I have seen and I have heard. I have come to rescue them. God says up here, 